Welcome to the 16th annual video festival. Before we start, it's really important for you to know that this whole thing is put together by volunteers. The ACM NE board, uh, many members of the board are here today, worked tirelessly on our three-day event, which started with a trade show, and then a conference and special awards, and finally culminating in today. Will members of the board please stand and wave so people can say thank you. There was another group very instrumental in making this happen today, and that is our New Hampshire chapter, the NHCCM. We also want to especially thank um, the PBD Access Telecommunications uh, group, who do all the logistics for this competition to make sure your videos get cataloged, sent to the judges, get, get returned, and, hold, and get you judging sheets so you can make your show even better than it was last year. Thank you, Peabody. This is a great moment for all of you. It really is. I hope you're cherishing it. I hope you're enjoying it thoroughly because this is the culmination of your hard work and dedication in local media. You're the ones that are out in your communities who are producing the shows, who are touching on the issues, showing sports, kids, seniors, veterans, representing a lot of groups that maybe don't get represented in the mainstream media every day. What you do is important, and that's what we heard at yesterday's keynote speech, that what we do is important because it is local, it's personal, it's human. I mean, we use a lot of technology, but when it comes down to it, what we do is about humans communicating with humans. We have something very special for you. We're going to kick off this show with just the right attitude. Let's go. Welcome to the Random Game. I'm your host, insert name here. We're trying to hook up an ordinary member of our community with the right studio. But first, let us meet our contenders. Studio One is a large metropolitan center with a multi-million dollar studio and shareholders hungry for a big profit. Welcome Big For-Profit Studio. Studio Two is a production house that churns out commercials and programs with professional staffing for generous rental fees. Welcome Production House Studio. <laughs> studio Three is a community-based peg studio with a dedicated staff, inclusive policies, and comprehensive training. Welcome Community Access Studio. <laughs> And now, let's meet our contestant. She's a family cook who can whip up anything from chicken soup for a sick child to filet mignon for a dinner party. Meet, I'm a cook. So, uh, I'm a cook. We have three studios here, which might be the right studio for you, to start your cooking show. Are you ready? I sure am. All right. I've got my questions right here. Studio number one. If I brought you a sample of my famous lasagna and a proposal for a cooking program, how would our meeting go? Well, after I ate some of your lasagna, I would probably look at your proposal and try to ascertain how we can make money off of it. If I can't see the potential, I'd file your proposal in the outbox. <laughs> Well, is it vegetarian or meat lasagna? Whichever you prefer. Well, I love lasagna, so we would sit down to eat it. Then I would work up a proposal for the production schedules and costs. When you gave me a deposit, we'd begin your show. Oh, well, at 
least you like the food. <laughs> Studio three? Well, we would sit down and chat about your idea and see if there are trade members or interns or someone else who can help you. Or if you have family members or friends who would like to help you do this, we'd set up a training just for them. Then we would eat your lasagna and share it with anyone who's around because the fastest way to get a crew is to feed them. <laughs> you can say that again. Okay, I'm a, what's your next question? Thanks. <laughs> Studio number one. I have always envisioned myself as the next Rachel Ray, a famous network star. But I've never hosted a TV show before. How would you support me in becoming a famous host? We'd have you take a screen test, go through makeup and wardrobe, and make sure you appeal to our viewing demographics. Then, you'd do a pilot and we'd show it to our test audience, but if the audience didn't like you, we'd have to find your replacement. Oh. What? Rude much? <laughs> Studio number two. Well, you can host anything with us, and since you pay by the hour, we don't care how long you take. <laughs> well, I, I see. Um, studio number three? Well, we do offer some training on how to host a show, and we can review your outline to look for places where you can make the transition smoother. As long as you're willing to work at it, we're willing to help. Wow! That's so f Great! <laughs> okay, Ima. This is your final question. Make it count. Thanks. <clears throat> Studio number one. When my program is done, how will you schedule and distribute it? Well, we'll go by your demographic appeal and what sponsors are willing to pay to purchase commercial time during your show. Then, we'll pick your airtime and frequency based on that. Demographic appeal, hmm? Studio number two? Well, the production is yours since you pay for it, so you can approach Studio One here and ask them to air it. Or I suppose you can start a YouTube channel. Studio number three. Please tell me there's a better option. Well, we'll work with you to find the best airtime slot we can and hopefully give you multiple airings a week. We also offer video on demand and streaming on the internet, some for just a small fee and other stations will do it for free. And of course, number two is right, you can just put it on YouTube if you want. The video belongs to you, so it's all yours. All right, you've heard from all three of our studios here tonight. Yes, I have. Audience, let's hear from you. Should I choose Studio One? How about Studio Two? And Studio Three? Looks like the audience have made their choice. It's all up to you now, Ima. Who do you choose? I am choosing studio number three! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Tune in next time when we try to help another community member start their own show. Also check out next year when Ima enters her new cooking show in the Alliance for Community Media Video Festival. Welcome everyone and enjoy the show. And as you can see, it was produced by our friends at Concord TV, Concord, New Hampshire. They're sitting right here in the front table. Welcome again. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Keith Tebow. I'm the director of Fall River Community Media in Fall River, Massachusetts. I'm also on the board of directors of the Alliance for Community Media Northeast Region. I want to welcome you to our 16th annual 
Video Festival Awards. <laughs> Our final category uh, today is the overall excellence in public educational and governmental access. Our first award winner is budget of 750000 and above, RETN, Regional Educational Television Network, Burlington, Vermont. This is RETN, Channel 16, right here in, where are we? Burlington. Watch and learn. My name is Vanessa Coppola, and I am a design and technology teacher and social studies teacher at South Burlington High School. What's been fantastic for me is um, to be able to send my students off to internships with RETN. I think it's a great bridge, especially for students that are looking at going into digital media as a career. You have no idea how happy you have made my colleague, Drew. I'd like to thank the Alliance and all of you for, um, for honoring us this year with this. This has been a wonderful year for RETN. Not only was our executive director honored yesterday with the uh, uh, Chuck Sherwood Leadership Award, which we're very proud of, um, we also, RETN, were lucky and fortunate enough to be uh, honored at the National um, Alliance Conference as the um, Educational Access uh, Overall Excellence, which was not good enough for Drew. He thought we needed to be competing with public educational and government access, not just educational. So we submitted this year into the PEG category here, and it brought a smile to his face. And I, I, I thank you for that, but mostly we, we, we work with an, oh, so many wonderful people. The partners who showed up today, Rosemary and Bobby, it's, it's wonderful to have them be part of us and uh, we work with great people in Vermont. So thank you for this honor, thank you for this award, we really appreciate it. Overall excellence in PEG for a budget of $500,000 and above, the Public Access TV Corporation, Lake Success, New York. After over 10 years of negotiating a renewal of franchise with our local cable company, PATV received the capital funding to renovate the studio that was initially installed in 2001. By the beginning of 2013, the studio was ready to start production. In January, PATV hosted open houses for community residents and local organizations. Training workshops began for veteran and new program producers and crew. In April, PATV had our official ribbon cutting at the studio, which is located at 1111 Marcus Avenue in Lake Success. For the year 2013, 185 new programs were produced by PATV, community residents, and organizations. Over 6,000 hours of programming was cablecast to our community. Last year, our organization and individual producers received four national awards, including overall excellence for PATV. On behalf of Public Access Television Corporation, I want to thank the Alliance for Community Media Northeast uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without our great staff, uh, all our excellent uh, producers, and all of our, our volunteers. Our next overall excellence winner is in the budget category of two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars. NPA TV, Norwood, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Mr. Brunt. I am the TV production teacher here at Norwood High School. Um, Norwood High School and NPA have formed a nice partnership where NPA provides equipment um, for the students to use, including a TV studio and some nice editing computers. And in exchange, the students have access to um, all the staff and equipment that they have available. The day starts with NHS Update, which is a live daily newscast. Students arrive early to produce the program, and it is broadcast to the classrooms and to the viewers at home. There are four levels of TV, with 100 students enrolled. Students learn the basics of TV production, uh, starting with the basics of the TV studio, including all of the cameras and switching equipment, but it also includes uh, storytelling, which starts in the actual classroom 
um, with writing and shooting and producing content here on the computers. We also produce Mustang Magazine, which is a show that is hosted by students and showcases student work. Hi, my name is Jack Tolman, and I'm the station manager for Norwood Public Access. I'm proud and honored to accept this award on behalf of our board of directors, the staff, and the entire town of Norwood. We were formed 10 years ago, and this is a great way, I feel, to celebrate our 10th anniversary. Um, in, in the past year of, of this award range, uh, we did over 700 shows, uh, and I feel that is, uh, on the high side, we have a three three members of the staff are full-time. We have about six part-time staffers, but we all come together, and, and that includes public access, educational, and government, and um, 740 shows, actually. Um, and I'm proud of that. Um, we take pride that we're not just located in Norwood, uh, but we have become a part of Norwood. Um, in my opinion, the, the success of Norwood Public Access is the result of teamwork and partnerships that were formed in the past 10 years. Uh, we have uh, monthly programs and segments highlighting the NOAA Fire Department, the Police Department, the Library, the Senior Center, the DPW. Um, and, and I feel that when you work together and everybody's on the same page, that is how uh, we can make a difference. Uh, the town government, from the, uh, from the superintendent of schools to the town manager to the selectmen to the principal, we are located in Norwood High School. Everyone is on the same page with our mission. Uh, the school department uh, and NPA formed a partnership, and we have become not only a part of Norwood, but I feel we've become part of the school experience for many students. Um, I, I did not know that Beverly uh, had a, uh, their studio was up in the high school, so I'm going to reach out and maybe go up there for a tour. And Peabody, um, looks like there's a lot of exciting things going on there, and I'd like to um, uh, perhaps visit them. And what I'd like to do is, Norwood is right on 95. If anybody wants to come by and see, our studio is only four years old. Uh, the high school is only, it's brand new. If anybody wants to come by Norwood, uh, this is an open invitation. Before I close, um, I would like to remind us that we're all, um, that public access is one of the last surviving concepts that is truly local. It was mentioned earlier this afternoon. Uh, we broadcast hyper-local content that keeps our viewers connected to their towns. Uh, that's very important to me. Um, and, and it's not the equipment that we have, but it's really how we use it. Uh, in closing, I'd like to thank uh, the staff, Megan Staffia Corbett, Mike Maloof, Erica McLaughlin, Sarah, M Sarah Sullivan for all their hard work. I'd like to thank our board of directors for their guidance. I'd like to thank Scott Murphy for taking a ride up from Norwood today in the rain today to being, for being here. That means a lot, Scott. Thank you. In closing, I, I've already closed twice. Um, <laughs> I want to thank the public access producers, volunteers, and announcers. And of course, I'd like to thank all our viewers in Norwood. And finally, I want to thank the ACMNE for honoring us with your overall excellence award. Thank you. Next overall excellence in pay in the budget category of $100,000 to $250,000, Marblehead Community Access and Media, Marblehead, Massachusetts. The Marblehead Drain Project on Atlantic Avenue has moved into a new construction phase. In preparation for a large piece of equipment to be installed, a trench will be dug across the roadway in front of Phillips and Lee Service Station. As of this taping on July 18th, Atlantic Avenue has not been completely closed as outbound traffic has been able to get through, but inbound traffic is being diverted at Hawk Street to Washington Street and then to Five Corners, where you can access the businesses on Atlantic Avenue on the other side of the trench. On this week's Marblehead's Big Dig the Whole Story, Robert Simonelli of the Chamber of Commerce checks in with some of the businesses right near the construction to see how they're faring. We're here discussing some upcoming uh, details, but we're going to put on our hard hat and get ready to get into the project here. So you recognize John Caswell and James Moroni. This is, this is MHTV. This is the staff. To win this really takes a lot of hard work by a lot of people, but we don't complain about having a small staff. We just complain about not having enough hours in the day. So we really appreciate the recognition from the uh, ACMNE. We were fortunate enough to be recognized on the national level this year too. And um, so what's left, I guess we can only aspire to reaching one of those higher budget categories. <laughs> so thank you very much. Our final award in the overall excellence category of the budget of up to $100,000, WPAA-TV and Media Center, Wallingford, Connecticut.
you're talking about your movie. It's a 16 minute short film shot here in Wong. We've got this cool new virtual set. This is pretty, pretty sweet. Like we actually have a real table here. Live TV, baby. All right. <laughs> As I'm now. I'll figure out this virtual set for you guys at some point. I couldn't wait to come to the studio and to hear what you have for the story of the week. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome, Ralph. We'd like to say good evening to our audience, and tonight we're going to have a taste of the African relationship with the um, community out here in Wallenford. And we have in our studio, Blaise Donji, who is with the um, Power Health Initiative in Cameroon, which is in West Africa. Welcome to our studios, Blaise. What we're going to do today is work with Philo Doe. I'm close to the last word, I guess. Um, as a small station, we can only submit in the non-professional category because we are pretty much 99.9% .9 volunteer, which includes me as the full-time volunteer, staff ED, and we have Obamacare to thank for that, and the recession, and um, we did over 600 local programs this year um, completely as we, the people, of Wallingford, Connecticut. And so I'm very proud to say that my corporate gut has had us keeping up with some few bigger folks. And I'm really glad and proud uh, to be able to accept this overall excellence based on what my citizens have done with their 1924 barn that they also renovated. And it's a really cool place. So if you're in Connecticut, the middle of Connecticut, definitely visit us because the barn is now a, a TV station and black box theater and uh, we're already almost through 2014, so I hope as I have been sitting there, you're all thinking about what you're going to be sharing here next year. Thank you all, and thank you for the Northeast Alliance volunteers as well. Let's give one big final round of applause to all the winners. This is all about you and the great work that you do in all your local communities. We are definitely proud of you. You should be proud of yourselves, and we look forward to the 17th video festival about a year from now. Thank you. I've, I've had a lot of time to sit here and, and think about exactly how I'm going to do my speech. But uh, truth be told, the show is all me and had nothing to do with anybody else. So, <laughs> thank you and good day. No, uh, kidding, really quick. 